<clears throat> Jennifer went over to Joey's apartment that morning. Requesting Jody's help. Jody did what any good friend would do, and she tried to help. Her boyfriend, Brian, was home as well, and she decided she convinced Brian to, to go over there, even though he initially didn't want to be involved. This was Jody's friend who was in trouble, and she wanted to be there for her friend. So Jody and Brian went next door to Jennifer and Daryl's apartment at Jennifer's request and her invitation because <clears throat> they <clears throat> Jody and Brian were under the impression that having backup could help. This part is undisputed. Brian and Jody were invited to Jennifer and Daryl's apartment that morning, the morning that Jennifer died, at Jennifer's urging. I suspect you'll hear that it was because Daryl was hurting her, and she was afraid. After that, things get messier. You may hear a few different versions of what happened in the apartment, <coughs> some of which may make sense and some of which may not. Either way, it's clear that there was a tragedy. Jennifer was shot and died. Daryl was shot and he survived. All of it happened very quickly. You'll hear, <clears throat> you'll hear different pieces of the puzzle after that. What friends saw when they discovered what had happened, what police saw when they reported to the scene, what we can tell from the physical evidence that was recovered. You'll hear from witnesses about the things that we can't know from the evidence, what we are unable to figure out after the fact. You'll probably hear from Daryl, and you may even hear from Jody O'Brien. Just as you wouldn't skip to the last page of a novel that you're reading to find out the end, to find out what happens, I'm asking you not to skip to the end of this story not to pre-decide your conclusion. There's going to be a lot of evidence to consider, a lot of moving parts. And I'm asking you to keep an open mind as to what you hear and to how it fits together. To consider how things fit or maybe how they don't fit. And to think about what happened here and, and why. <clears throat> I trust that at the end of this, you'll agree with me the prosecutors cannot prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Brian Greenwell murdered Jennifer Kane. And they cannot prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he assaulted Daryl Wilson without justification. At the end of this trial, I'm going to get back up here in front of you and tell you how I think all of the pieces fit together. How I think we can make sense of everything that we hear. And then it'll be up to you to think about what you heard, what you saw, and how to make sense of it. I think that at the end of all that, you'll agree with me that Brian Greenwell is not guilty of murder. He's not guilty of attempted murder. He's not guilty of intentional assault. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Erskine. Mr. McLeod? Okay, please, the court. Ladies and gentlemen, I represent Jody Cecil, and we're here today. Um, it seems real clean cut. Everyone did a bang up job, everyone, everyone's doing what they're supposed to do. But none of this would have happened, ever, if there wasn't domestic violence going on next door. And when you haven't heard, Daryl Wilson got out of jail, it wasn't jail, it was prison. He'd been sentenced to two years in 2015, 
in 2000, you know, late that year, right around that time, he's sent to prison. And he gets out, and whatever it did, and he's nine years younger than Jody, whatever it did, he's out, he's bucking around, it's constant. It's constantly there. Okay, so, you know, we didn't call the police. They make a big deal out of that. You know, the reality of it is if, if you think someone, I mean, they don't know what's going on. They go over there, they get caught up in a bad situation. A situation where someone has just got out of prison, he's going crazy over there. And that's a control thing. And I'll, I'll cross-examine the detective and talk about the, the things that control, like domestic violence brings up. It's about control of someone. It's about making sure they don't do anything without you knowing. It's about tremendous jealousy. It's about feelings that you have no idea. And the person that, the people that commit these domestic violence acts, you have no idea. It's hard to understand what's going on in their minds. It's always about them versus me. I mean, I've seen it out in the public. I've seen people, and they can't even hold it within the, in, the, in the public venue. And you see something where, you know, he's like, okay, 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 and, and there, and you know you just want to come up and you want to get involved. But you don't know where that person wants to take it. You don't know where the person that's committing that wants to go. And here it went violent. Brian didn't want to go over there. And Joey's like, you got to go, you got to go. I mean, she's panicking, she's panicking. And they go over there, and it breaks. He's so, he's so angry, the screaming, that he's, he's at wit's end. He can't believe it, that she brought someone else into it. Your Honor, may we approach?